Hello and welcome to my new webinar series geared towards the questions floating around industry and where Microsoft can help. In this episode, we're going to be discussing the modern workplace and I'm delighted to be joined by Robert Epstein for this session. Robert, thank you for taking the time to talk today. Would you like to do a brief introduction? Thanks, Dan. Great to be here. So I'm Robert Epstein. I'm a product marketing manager in the fairly newly formed Microsoft 365 product team in the UK. My specific area of responsibility is looking after our partners and ensuring they're aware and trained of the Microsoft 365 products and solution. Now, I know you're Azure, Dan, very focused on our Azure services, the computer of the world, as Satya recently put it. But of course, the other side of any great cloud solution is the user experience. And that's what Microsoft 365 is all about. Now, if I'm honest, when I started to think about this week's session, I was sitting on the beach. I was enjoying a beautiful sunshine whilst working on my laptop. And even now, admitting that feels kind of strange, like I was skiving off, not doing my work and failing to be productive. But the reality is that's simply not true. You see, attitudes towards working styles are changing. We live in a 24-7 economy and it's no longer about being chained to an office desk. The modern workplace is about striving to achieve a work-life balance and the promise of technology is to help us get more done with less effort. In my own example, commuting to Microsoft takes about seven hours, a working day in its own right and therefore unsustainable. It means early starts and late finishes, detracting the time that I spend with family, the time that I have for other interests and the time that I need to recuperate. But as a modern employer, Microsoft knows this. And instead of asking me to relocate, they provide me with the tools that I need to feel included, informed and productive. And that's really what I want to begin our discussion with today. I want to talk about the tools that we are building that enable a mobile workforce to collaborate more effectively and drive consistent experiences. So Robert, can you tell us a little more about our product portfolio and Microsoft's strategy in this area? So I completely agree with your description of what work life is all about these days. In fact, our team's a great example. Whilst we're officially all based in Reading, the people in my group live in Southampton, Leeds, Bath, London, and a few in Reading. So most of our meetings are actually done online. And this is typical of the workplace today. You know, we see some trends in the workplace around, you know, multi-generations working together, uh, increased transparency, people working from anywhere uh, and across a multitude of devices. So, you know, you asked about our product strategy and where are we heading with that? And the simple answer is it's Microsoft 365, which we call the complete intelligent solution to empower employees to be creative and work together securely. And you can see here the kind of typical four pillars that we would talk about uh, for Microsoft 365 and what it does for customers around unlocking creativity, built for teamwork, integrated for modern IT and intelligent security. And I'm sure we'll get into some of that this morning. So, you know, if you look at what's in this, it's an incredibly large product portfolio. It's Office 365, which many customers have got, which includes all of the Office apps and the collaboration tools. Um, it has all of the back end services, so Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, OneDrive and so forth. Uh, and we're starting to see some of the AI creep in here with things like Delve and Power BI as well. Um, and then, of course, you know, the, from a security point of view, it uses Intune, Windows 10 and the Azure Active Directory. So it really brings everything together. Now, one of the important things when you want to talk about a modern workplace is to think about the experience that many of our joint customers have you know, in terms of the actual device that they are using day to day. We talk about this idea of a modern workplace and digital transformation, but the average employee, I'm not talking about the CXO suite, of course, get a pretty old computer. Um, it's running Windows 7. It takes 20 minutes to boot up. Now, some people like the ability to go and get a cup of coffee every morning whilst their machine boots up. It logs on to the Active Directory. It runs a whole load of scripts and a whole load of third-party antivirus. Frankly, it's just a really frustrating experience. So for me, if partners are thinking about the opportunities in modern workplace, it's very much around, you know, can you go and modernize, give people those great devices like Surface with pen, with touch, two-in-one capabilities that allows people, frankly, to be more mobile. If you want that modern workplace, you genuinely need the device you know, that doesn't just have a 20-minute battery life that allows you to work from anywhere you want to work. So we now talk about as well unlocking creativity rather than kind of productivity, because in the productivity space, so much of this is just going to be replaced by AI and bots and so forth. So if it's a repeatable automated task, 
why wouldn't you get software to repeat the task? And that means that for people doing their jobs, it's very much around how they need to be more creative in their work. And so when you want to do that, you probably want to use things like pen and ink. You want to be able to have that creative thought and note it down wherever you are on any device. And so the great thing with the whole Microsoft 365 suite is it's designed to work across anything. It doesn't matter whether people are using an iPhone, a, you know, an iPad, an Android phone, you know, or any of the great Windows devices that I just talked about. You know, they can con continue to communicate with, with people. They can jottle their notes down. They can get access to all their data and content in OneDrive and SharePoint, you know, wherever they are. And they get great, you know, up-to-date versions of the Office app, so Office 365 applications that allows you to do really cool transitions with 3D like you can see here. And beyond that, of course, there is another great opportunity, which is to bring more workers into this whole Microsoft 365 capability. So we talk about the idea of first line workers. Now, this actually comprises about 80% of the global workforce. It goes way beyond the traditional information worker that we've all been supplying PCs to. And most of these people have been disconnected from their traditional kind of PC device because it's never been worth providing them with a very expensive device. But of course, now they've all got a phone, probably their own one, in, the pocket, in their pocket. And we want to start bringing them into the company systems and connecting them to the Office 365 cloud so that we can communicate with them with Yammer, uh, they can start to see processes, they can start taking, getting involved in process uh, and you know, into the company systems and line of business applications. So there's a huge opportunity for going after sort of first line workers, uh, whether we think about sales associates, people in the factory, um, classically in the leisure industry. You know, these are the first people that customers are interacting with uh, in, you know, in end customer organizations. So we bring things like Microsoft 365 F1, which gives you all of those capabilities Plus, we've got some great new tools, things like Staff Hub, uh, that allows you to do scheduling of all these workers, uh, and you can do it from those mobile devices. Um, and we've also got a range of new, very low-cost devices designed so that if you did want to start putting you know, a more capable device in, uh, then you can do that as well. So, you know, this really starts to bring the complete solutions together for all workforces, the knowledge worker, uh, the first line worker. Um, and, you know, there's a lot in there that I don't think is you know, really utilized. And that's one of the opportunities for, for our partners. Customers have got you know, much of the Office 365 stack, but they're not using it all. So how do they go in and deploy the SharePoint solutions? Most of them have done the sort of exchange migration. Even in the Office suite, if you take a product like OneNote, I think that's the hidden gem. And as you'll know, we pretty much run the company on it. Um, and yet very few people are really utilizing that technology. So it might be worth having a quick look at some of the OneNote capabilities. So this is OneNote, and for me, it's a complete hidden gem that's massively underutilized. It's basically a note-taking application that I've got an infinite size notebooks, and you can see here I've got lots of different notebooks. For me, it was the biggest productivity gain I ever got when I moved to this when I joined Microsoft. Because most people, if you think about it, they take their notes in a notebook, and when that's finished, it goes on a shelf and it's lost forever. But I've got all 15 years of notes all on whatever device I'm using and all completely searchable. So I'm really running my whole life on it now. You can see here this is a family family notebook that I have that I share with my wife and we use it for our holiday planning. So here I've got recommendations from somebody else. This was for Christmas holiday we went on, uh, places we might want to go eat. I did some web searching and I pulled in stuff from the web around pubs we might want to go to for lunch uh, and walks that we might want to go on as well. Um, so it's really just free form and I can bring in any information and store it there. And the beauty is that there's free OneNote applications across everything from all the Apple devices, Android phones, etc. So even when we're out and about, we now use this for little shopping lists. And it doesn't matter you know, whether it be my wife or I have thought of something we want to add then when we walk into the shop we've all got the complete shopping list in front of us now this works really well um, with modern devices because of course it's really designed brilliantly to work with the pen as well so I'm using it here on my surface uh, and let's just add a, a page and I can show you a couple of the great things. So as you'd expect, I'd be able to type on this as well. So here I've got a new note, um, but I can also just start inking uh, and I've got some nice little features. So I've got things like ink to shape. So as I draw a circle, it'll give me an accurate circle. Uh, I can bring a ruler up on screen um, and use the power of touch to actually, you know, really do anything that I want on this. Uh, I can go back anywhere and start typing on the, on, on the screen as well. 
uh, so I can type my demo etc it's got some really nice little features as well so for example in maths um, so let's just take my ruler off the screen um, if my son's studying his A-levels at the moment uh, I could ask I could set an equation like 2x plus y equals 3 and then if I select that I can do ink to maths And it will actually solve that equation for me uh, and I can actually solve for y and I can even plot that in a graph. So some really nice little capabilities um, that brings in the power of inking and texting. Uh, you know, and now we're pretty much running the whole company on this these days because the really smart thing with this is that you can save OneNote to SharePoint drives and OneDrives and share them with other people. And when people are editing, all of that is flowing straight in. So when we go into meetings now, somebody's taking the meeting notes straight in there. We do all the prep in OneNote and everybody's seeing all of the pre-preparation work together in the OneNote. Somebody's keeping the notes from the meetings live in OneNote. And we even run our large kind of annual reviews in this as well, because everybody has one place to go to assemble all the content and it's all updated live across everybody. Thanks, Robert. That was a great overview. But I'd like to spend a moment talking about Teams. Now, I love this product. My go-to application allow me to not only communicate with customers and peers via chat, voice, and meetings, but also integrate my other office applications into a unified workspace that I can easily share. Then on top of this, we can introduce connectors into other services and introduce bot technologies. This makes the whole experience both customizable and fully extensible. So I guess I have two asks in my next question. Firstly, can you demonstrate Teams and its connectors? And then secondly, can you talk about what that means for products such as Skype? So let's have a look at Teams, which, as you said, is a rich sort of hub for everything you might want to do within a team, including conversations, meetings, calls, real time collaboration, etc. And, you know, what I love is it brings everything from Office 365 together in a really sort of easy but chat centered way of working. So I can you know, use all the power of Office 365. I can bring together files from SharePoint. I can bring team sites, notes from OneNote, uh, even exchange stuff together. So uh, here is a sample team. And as the owner of the team, I can see the team members. Uh, I can also see all of the channels in the team. And you can see how many members are in each channel as well. I can also set up bots from the team. Um, so I can discover bots. Uh, and then add those. So here's a mock-up for the supposed launch of the X1050 team. Uh, now each environment consists of channels. Um, so for example, let's go to the design channel. Now in this channel, I can have a look through recent conversations that have been going on. Uh, I can see new messages and I can see important messages with this marker. So I've got an exclamation mark here as uh, as an example. Uh, you can also at mention people. So here's where I've been at mentioned. Um, now, the other thing that's useful is sometimes to be able to email the uh, into a team as well. Um, so what I have to do here is I get the email address and that creates an email address that I can copy uh, and then I can send an email to that address. So, you know, the conversations go on very naturally and of course they're persistent. So they're saved and that allows anybody to catch up quickly uh, if they've been away or they want to see what's gone on earlier in the conversation. So let's have a look at the go to market plan, for example, uh, and this will show how easy it is to keep up with the conversation. Now, if I want to keep up with notifications on this, all I have to do is favorite the channel. Um, so if I click here, then you can see that I've got the favorite. I could get rid of that just by removing the favorite. Um, if I want to keep up to date on converse, all the conversations, then I just follow this channel. So Teams conversations are threaded and that allows you know, really clear differentiation between all the topics. So here, for example, in the go to market, there's a conversation with Isaiah Langer. And if I click, I can see all of the conversations, the discussions in there, and I can send a reply to that. Now I get rich formatting, so I can include attachments and a wide variety of visual clues like emojis, GIFs, memes, and so forth. Um, so here I can edit a, a new conversation. Uh, let's say we want to thank the team for all their hard work. So I might add a subject and then I'll start the conversation. Um, and then maybe I want to add uh, a sticker um, or an emoji 
or a GIF. Um, and a variety of you know, other stickers are available to me and memes and so forth. So let's go with a sticker, um, which creates, you know, which the team like. Uh, let's go with the high five. And that's done. Now, if I want to send that, I just click the send button. Uh, and let's say I want to start collaborating now with Isaiah on a document and attach some files. Um, so we'll start a new conversation. And in order to ensure that uh, we include Isaiah in this, we're going to at mention him. Uh, and that way it makes sure that they won't, uh, you know, the person's not going to miss the information. So then we want to add an attachment. And we're going to go and do that from OneDrive. Uh, and we can scroll down to find the document that we want. Uh, and then we can try and find the Contoso patent template, for example. So we're going to upload that and we're going to send that to him. Now, uh, it's important I want the rest of the team to see this as well. And I could at mention the whole team. But what I can do is also make it a tab. Um, so if I click on files, then uh, it's really easy to sort of add this uh, as a tab as well. Um, so we click on the Contoso template and then I can just make this a tab. Uh, and I can continue to do that to make, you know, and you can see that's where the, the tab has been added and I can continue to do that for others as well. So let's go on to the GTM plan. And uh, you can see here that I've got, uh, you know, files built for every channel and they're a way of members sharing all of the contents, you know, in a channel. Um, and by default, all members of the team can add, edit and view within that as well. Now, the wiki page is responsive note taking app like app that I can use for app mentioning and threaded conversations, but right in the app. Uh, I've got a, a stream service in office, which allows everyone to upload content from videos and different channels in there. Um, so, you know, really good way of finding content discovery. And then here I've got sort of the Office 365 apps that users would expect. Um, so I've got PowerPoint, Excel, uh, even Power BI. So if I click here, for example, you can see that I've got a product brochure um, and, you know, I can even track opportunity pipelines for new products um, through Power BI. So this is going to load the Power BI dashboard, which gives me a kind of rich view of the current projected opportunities and revenue. And I can see all the different reports here. Uh, I can see the upcoming opportunities uh, and the Power BI reports are really interactive as well. Um, you know, so if here I can click on the details um, and uh, I can click on the steps here uh, and you can kind of see that I can review data from the weekly planning meetings. Uh, if I click on the pie chart, you can see further analysis on this uh, and I can uh, export that data you know, and continue to work on it. Now we use Planner to organize the work and keep the team on track as well. Um, so if I go to that, then I can do team planning prep. Um, and this gives me sort of buckets for organizing this project. Um, so if I click in the to do button uh, and add a new item, then I can create a new task. Um, and I can say, for example, add analyzing Power BI. Uh, I can set a due date for that. Uh, let's set that as the 4th of August. Um, and then I can add that. Uh, to somebody as an assignment uh, so I can pick somebody from the team uh, let's add this to Megan and then add that as a task and you know you can see that, that I can set the status here um, yeah you know, so that everybody keeps track of it where exactly where everything is so let's have a quick look at chats for example if I click on chats in the far left here so it's easy to have a quick call to you know, resolve an issue or answer a question or collaborate with somebody or get to a quick decision. So in chats, team members only see the private conversations that they've created or which they were added. So we've got some one-to-one -one, uh, discussions here with the team, for example. So if we click on this from Isaiah, uh, you can also see I've got group conversations with other team members um, like Alexander and Joanna, etc. So let's click into the group chat. Um, now I can add another member to the existing conversation, which is quite useful. Um, so if I want, I can just add a person to the chat here. 
um, and uh, let's add Nesta for example. Um, so as I start searching that, I can find the individual that I want uh, and add them to the chat. Now I can rename a chat if it's going to become persistent um, so that people can find it quickly. Um, so I can just simply add this. Um, we can effectively create a, a, a group name for this chat as well. Um, so let's call this, you know, process chat. Um, and uh, now I can create a new chat. Um, but I can do that privately if I want to just let somebody know that they've been added to a conversation. Um, so on the chat list here, uh, I just need to click on the new chat icon. Um, and then let's click on uh, Diego, for example. And here I can uh, start a new chat. Um, this is just going to let them know that I'm pulling them into the conversation, as I said, and then I can send that off. Now, just like other chat applications, uh, I can schedule meetings directly from Teams as well. Uh, so let's go to meetings. So by clicking in this, then in one place, I can see all the meetings that I've got across Exchange, Skype for Business and Teams. Uh, let's go and schedule a new meeting. Um, so I'm going to select this to be in a channel. Um, and that way I can sort of sync with everybody in the team automatically. So under the title, let's uh, give the meeting a title. Let's just have a quick team sync. Um, let's add somebody to the meeting. So let's add Joanna to this. Um, and we'll add Isaiah as well. Uh, and then we're going to schedule the meeting. So that gets going. So here you can see the meeting's ready. Let's just close that. Um, now, in the meeting section, I can tell which meetings are uh, enabled from Teams, um, and I can join that discussion. So this is simulating that I'm joining the discussion. I've got everybody that I've just invited to the call, um, and you know I've got my call controls here as well. Uh, I'm going to hang up to end the meeting here. Uh, let's go back to my teams. So if I go back to the general channel, then I can also get some really good uh, real time productivity tools um, and kind of have quick meetings as well. So I have a meet now feature, um, you know, which we had in uh, Skype that allows quick adding of voice and video for ad hoc meetings. Um, so I can do that here uh, with the video icon. So if I click the video icon, then I can effectively start a conversation now. Uh, let's turn the video off and then I can click on Meet Now. So just uh, Microsoft Teams supports Meet Now. Uh, I can share a desktop, uh, I can collaborate content like Office documents and I can continue the team conversation with a call. Um, so I can share my desktop, I can mute conversations obviously, um, just as you see me turn this into a call. Uh, I can do video sharing uh, and all the kind of features that you're used to in Skype for Business as well in order to really get more productive. So let's hang that up. So the Teams environment is really flexible. Um, so if I go back to the Teams, and you can see I can quickly add conversations, I can add members, I can add channels, conversations, content, you know, and edit that team configuration as well. Um, so if we add a team, for example, then you know, let's say we want to create a whole new team. So I can create a social media finds team, for example, uh, and let's just next that. Um, and we'll add some people to the team. So some of the people that you've seen me communicate with as well, uh, I can just add them to the team. Uh, let's add Isaiah and let's uh, add Grady and add this and then close. Yeah, and it's that simple to be able to create a team. So you know, I've now got the core pieces of the team set up. Um, and here I can go to you know, add a Twitter conversation, for example. Um, so let's add a channel. Um, let's type a channel name in and let's add that. Uh, and the team's kind of ready to start working together. So, of course, the other thing that people are going to want to be able to do is they're going to work on teams whilst they're mobile as well. So let's switch view here and you can see that, you know, somebody's traveling on business here. This is using their phone to check in on the team activity. So I can scroll through all of my alerts, as you'd expect with a kind of traditional social media or conversation app. 
Um, and you know, I can scroll through the alerts. Uh, now I see some activity here from Megan, um, and I can see that uh, I've been mentioned as in this as well. It says I've been mentioned here. So on this reply, uh, I want to have a look at the additional items, um, and you know, I can acknowledge that message so that the person knows that I've seen it just with a quick like. Um, so let's go back to all my messages. So let's say I want to run a new idea by Megan. Um, so I can start this as a kind of one-to-one -one chat. So we start a chat, um, and I'm going to start a new chat uh, in the to line. We're going to say who that's to. We're going to identify that it's chat with Megan, um, and you know, let's just start typing a quick conversation and you know, let me know when you're free, etc. And then I can send that. Um, now let's have a look at what uh, Megan will have seen back on the desktop. So here, if I go to chat, then you know, back on the desktop. Uh, it's come up exactly as a notification, um, so that person is going to, you know, Megan's going to know, and if she wants, she can reply in real time. So as you can see, it's really easy for us to have conversations, to escalate that into calls. We can do screen sharing. We can do multi-party video conferencing. Um, we can share our files. We can create new channels of conversations. We can you know, access this on our mobile. It's a really easy way of everybody collaborating. Now, just to finish off, I'm going to talk to you about bots because I know you love AI and bots. Um, and if you want to get help, um, then Teams has the inbuilt T-Bot, which is the chat partner to help you get the most out of Teams. Uh, so if we click Click on Tbot, um, and you know I want to know what integrations are available. For example, about adding tabs, um, you know, then all we have to do is type a question to Tbot and send that. So you know, what are tabs? And through the magic of AI, I'm going to get an answer back, uh, and you know, you can see how AI is infused with it as well. So you know, great, great development for Teams. Um, you know, the product is iterating at a huge pace. Uh, hopefully, that's given you a good overview of Teams. Thanks for that, Robert. That was a great demo, and I hope it highlights to our partners just how impressive the Teams application is. But let me press you one more time. What does Teams mean for the likes of Skype? So I wasn't trying to avoid your question. We're trying to provide as much clarity for customers and partners as possible. Yeah, and the honest answer is absolutely Teams will be the future. Um, so let me show you what you can do today. You know, the, the basis is plan people's journey from Skype to Teams. Um, onboard users to Teams today for partners is a great opportunity to go and explain the benefits of Teams. And you can run them side by side today. So you know, there's an easy transition for, for people. We're updating Teams, as I said before, at a huge rate of knots. We've got a clear roadmap of the meetings, experiences, as you can see here, uh, and all the capabilities that are coming now and shortly um, to Teams as well. But we do know that some customers will need Skype for business for quite some time. Um, and so we're continuing to develop that product as well. Um, and this shows for both Skype for business uh, on-prem and Skype for business online, that we have a roadmap that goes through the rest of this calendar year that we can continue to update. Uh, there will be be a Skype for Business server coming at some point through this calendar year as well. So, sorry, server 2019. So the updated product coming this calendar year. Um, and so there is a clear roadmap that says if you're stuck, you know, if you need the Skype for Business um, product or Skype Business Online, you can continue to use those. But we're starting to say there's an opportunity for partners now to transition people over the right period of time for their customers towards the team's environment. So let me change focus once more. Now you've shown us some amazing tools to help communicate, collaborate and organize our day. But with a mobile workforce arguably working on a myriad of devices, how do we ensure that things are secure? I mean, if my laptop isn't on premises, how do we maintain compliance? How do we ensure that my device receives the necessary patches and updates that corporate policy defines? Then on top of this, what if it's not company property? What if I'm working on my own personal tablet? How do we keep personal and professional data separate and adequately protected? I mean, to me, it just seems like an administrative nightmare. So can you talk about what Microsoft are doing to help in this area? So you're absolutely right, Dan. This is a huge overhead for IT organizations at the moment. And of course, a classic need for automation. And this is really what we talk about with the transition to modern IT, by which we really mean management from the cloud. 
Because if you think about the environment today, people have got multiple devices, many of which are their own, um, and that all needs to be managed. And then huge amounts needs to be updated on a regular basis, including, of course, Windows 10, which we're bringing out feature updates to twice a year. So what we really see is people starting to use MDM tools like Intune to do that management, which allows them to manage all devices, you know, including phones, tablets, and Windows PCs, um, and starting to introduce a lot more automation, but also self-service because users are far more you know, savvy today. Um, so things like password reset shouldn't be a drain on the organization anymore. Users should be able to use the tools to do that, which they can do with the combination of you know, Azure AD and Intune. And Azure AD is actually pretty critical here because if you think about the security threats, there's no need to go into just how kind of scary a world it is out there, unfortunately. People see that every day in the newspapers and when they're reading their websites. And a lot of this is around the fact that the security perimeter has changed. In the old world of on-premise, all we tried to do was build you know, larger and larger firewalls to keep the bad guys out of the network. But as we move to the cloud and data is stored in all sorts of systems um, across, you know, Know, SaaS providers and Office 365, etc. then really the security perimeter becomes the identity. And that's where you need to think differently, you know, and you need to be thinking about something like Azure AD as the key identity that allows people single sign-on so they can log on to all their applications really easily. But we've got to be able to protect that. So when we talk about the security elements today and we think about sort of the M365 intelligent security, we talk around in the, the importance of identity and access management. So we're clear on, you know, controlled identities, uh, people logging in with things like Windows Hello, so two-factor authentication, but on a modern device, as I said earlier, really nice and easy with biometrics like facial recognition and thumbprint. Then information protection, which is absolutely critical. Yeah, you know, it's all well and good protecting the identity, but your your information flows around on USB sticks, and people email it out and about. And you've got to have control of that corporate data, particularly with sort of things like GDPR coming in, uh, you know, very very shortly. In fact, a bit of free advertising, I think your next webinar on the 11th of June is all around GDPR. So I'm sure our partners want to get more information on that at some point in the future. Then you've got to think around threat protection. Uh, yes, it's still important that we manage to keep people out of our systems. And then finally, of course, all of this has to be managed. And that comes back to great cloud-based security management tools. How do you reduce the number of products that you're having to manage and keep updated, et cetera? Um, and how do you get that to sort of the fewest panes of glass to manage your entire security estate? Now, Microsoft has really changed as a security vendor. We're investing a billion dollars a year just in security R&D alone. I mean, that's bigger than the revenue of some security companies. And there is so much layered into Microsoft 365 that, again, I think people just aren't utilizing that actually allows partners to potentially go back to customers and say, you don't need to be licensing some of these third party products anymore because you're already licensed under Microsoft 365. And because our security is built in, not bolted on. It makes it you know, more reliable and easier to manage in, in one go. So let's give you a couple of examples of the kinds of security we're talking about. You know, one of the things I love is conditional access. Um, yeah, and this is absolutely that Azure AD identity um, and the elements of EMS, which is part of Microsoft 365, where you, know, you can set up and partners can do this on behalf of their customers, that kind of if then capability. So before a device is allowed onto a network, look at the security risk and make some assessments based on policies that you set. So are you are you comfortable that the machine has been updated to with all the latest patches? Um, is the user logging in from an unusual location or trying to use an app that maybe they've never used before? So you can assess all those criteria and then based on the level of risk, you can then choose you know, via policies again what to allow people to do or not. So do you want to allow them straight access automatically? Do you want to force a password reset? Do you want to do a multi-factor authentication maybe with their phone? And then when you're comfortable that this is a secure, valid you know, user, you then give them access to the system. So you know, conditional access, feature of Intune and EMS, absolutely key. Now, a lot of this, of course, relies on having secure devices in the first place. Um, and one of a, another great opportunity for partners is the transition from Windows 7 to Windows 10 that's really underway in the corporate space at the moment. Most small businesses and consumers are already on Windows 10. 
And one of the key things to think about is Windows 7 is a 10 year old piece of technology. Now I know you're very high tech and everything's gonna be up to date in your house, but for the average user, how many other pieces of 10 year old technology do they still have in their life? Not their mobile phone, their laptop, their car, you know, even the TV recorder or DVR, this has all been updated. So why is it acceptable that we use 10 year old technology to protect uh, that critical corporate asset, corporate uh, asset and information? So if you look here at Windows 7 and the security features around those elements I talked about before around how do you protect the device and the information, there's really very little built into Windows 7. And that's why I'm saying most customers are having to license third party products to fill that gap. And we think that all the capabilities you need are now built into Windows 10 plus EMS as part of the Microsoft 365 stack. So if you take the same device and you move it up to Windows 10, then you can see here a whole load of incremental security capabilities uh, that I talked about, for example, like Windows Hello for login that you get. And if you divide if you move that to a modern device with TPM chips and the latest security capabilities, then you add in even more capabilities just natively between M365 uh, and Windows 10. So we get credential guard that allows us to secure the identity. Uh, we get that conditional access that I just showed you. So, you know, a much more secure environment. Now, I did want to come back to something that you'd asked around, around information protection. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. How much control of data do our customers have? You know, it was really easy when it was all on-prem and it was just stored on the server. But as we move out to you know, Azure and the cloud and SaaS applications, think about the amount of information that's even out of a user's control, uh, stuff that's stored in Box and Google Drive and on people's mobile devices. You know, and it's really important to be able to control all that data. So you need to think about those data protection needs. How do you protect on the device itself? You know, unfortunately, a lot of people still leave their machines and planes, trains and automobiles, etc. And we've got to ensure that that's secure. And then, as you said, you've got to be able to separate the data between you know, a user's personal stuff and corporate information. And then we need to stop it getting out there when, you know, potentially, unfortunately, even maliciously, users start emailing stuff out to themselves or outside the organization, you know, etc. Um, and, and frankly, actually, Actually, even just stuff that's mishaps that happen, you know, people copy and paste information into Twitter. So we've got a series of tools across the Microsoft 365 stack that allow that to, to happen. So obviously built into Windows is BitLocker, which encrypts the entire information on the device locally to ensure that, you know, should that device get lost, nobody can access it. The data separation is provided by Windows Information Protection, uh, and that helps at the kind of app layer ensure what information is listed as company and what is personal and ensuring that we're protecting that company information automatically. And then we bring in through Azure Rights Management, part of Office 365, the ability to really start putting, frankly, some really smart AI into automatically recognizing data um, and you know, providing rights management and protection against it. So you can even use AI, for example, to be scanning documents. And if it sees credit card information or national insurance numbers, to automatically encrypt that uh, and provide kind of policies against it so that only authorized users can do that you know and we've starting to look at data using AI and kind of going that looks like company confidential so it pops up in the office applications and says this looks like company confidential do you want to reclassify it because you've got to make it easy for users or else the stuff just doesn't get used and then once of course it's classified as company confidential it follows that file around wherever that data is it doesn't matter whether it's stored in the cloud or whether it's been emailed out you know, if a user takes something home on a memory stick tries to access it you know 10 months later if they've left the organization if they can't validate their credentials then they can't get access to the information so you know there's really a whole swathe of products inside of Microsoft 365 that helps keep people secure helps keep that information their identity secure and I say it's all built in not bolted on thanks Robert so where can we learn more what resources do we have for our listeners so just released is the Modern Workplace webcast series uh, that Corp have produced, which is designed for customers, but I think really worth watching for everybody to just include their knowledge and awareness of it all. As ever, we've got loads of resources for partners that you can find on the MPN site, particularly the partner training site. And I think we've got all the links up for that.
I did want to call out a couple of others, um, certainly from a technical perspective in terms of helping customers deploy all this technology. There's, of course, Fast Track, at fasttrack.microsoft.com, which has all of the content that people need to help with that managed migration. And then the last one, which is fairly little known, is what we call the business value programs. And these are tools specifically to help partners kind of sell all of the value of this technology. Um, so there's a series of different components within the business value tools. Uh, the first one is what we call the value discovery workshop. And this is where we can help create sort of PowerPoint based content that partners can take and utilize within their own materials in order to present the capabilities to partners at an early stage of the sales cycle. And the last one is around what we call the customer immersion experience, where they actually want to show and get hands on with the technology. And the beauty of this is the ability to spin up in Azure all of the capabilities we've talked about. So you can bring out tenant, real live working tenants of all of the Office 365 applications. And we've got scripts that you can work through and demo within a hands on way uh, to business decision makers. So I'd really encourage partners to just go and play around with those tools. You can get them all at transform.microsoft.com. It's open to all partners and makes it really easy to demo everything we've talked about today. OK, so let's wrap this up and open up for some questions. Robert, thank you for taking the time to be with us today and explain where Microsoft are in terms of helping our partners and customers achieve a modern workplace. I hope that our listeners have enjoyed the cast and would remind you all, this is driven by you. This is a platform to discuss the questions that you may have on the technologies and processes that you consume. So let me know what you want to hear and what you want to see and I will source the experts and make it happen.